in adults with adult growth hormone uh, deficiency, which many of us have, the replacement of growth hormone helps in preventing cancer. Forbes already done an article on this nature. It was originally published in the aging cell and they use DHEA, recombinant growth, growth hormone and metformin, which is a drug I personally, I don't, I don't like metformin. They use this and they actually show that they can slow down the aging process, which is amazing. Back to the liver king. Enough about my not having enough fat on my body. No, but tying it up to that, he, here's the thing, brother. I get so frustrated, so freaking frustrated with the fitness community talking about, um, hey, eating pizza and eating this and eating that, and they look chiseled. They look like they're sculpted. They look like great gods and not clear about what they're doing. And that is the only person that I've come and that I've called out on social media before. I'm like, hey man, you know, because you're doing certain things, right? With your shirt off, like eating certain foods, et cetera. People are gonna think, hey, this is exactly how this guy is, looks this way. Yeah. I, I'll do that, but I actually show people what I'm injecting at night. I'm very crystal clear. Hey, this is what I'm taking before I'm sleeping. You know, like I take this, I take my vitamins, I take that, etc. And just to, to clarify, you know, um, I, 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 I follow a line of bioidentical substance. I only put inside my body what my body either needs, what there's a receptor there for, or what my body produces. So if my body produces it, I'm okay with it. It's, you know, but it's a bioidentical substance. I'm I'm okay with it all the way from things like um iodine right things that your body needs in order to operate just like any system any machine okay so let me ask you this people are saying that one of the issues with the liver king besides him lying and that lie potentially fueling a lot of business for him based on his deception about how it is he truly got his body and him selling supplements that he claims got him that body when there were some other things involved as right. well the other issue is people say, well, what he was doing is problematic because it's dangerous, dangerous for the liver, dangerous for the lipids, dangerous for cancer risk. Now, from what I understand, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, if someone's on uh, appropriate amounts of testosterone replacement therapy mm -hmm. and someone is perhaps not doing like a bunch of steroids and SARMs and some of the things that might be a little bit murky in terms of the potential impact on health. And maybe they're doing like a little bit of testosterone and peptides, let's say. Do you think that's damaging to the body to do something like a testosterone and peptides protocol? Uh, oh, okay. So you just really, uh, this is like my favorite topic. Uh, and number one, let me just clarify with people, like what are my credentials? So I went to traditional medical school. I have a doctorate in medicine. Um, I stopped my residency. I didn't really agree with what I, after medical school, I did a postdoc in uh, metabolic research at the Cleveland Clinic here in Florida. Okay. So I, I actually worked with 1000 pound patients. I've seen those in, I, I was in, uh, I always loved m metabolic stuff. So I, I've, I've seen patients like that and to working with, you know, some of the top, athletes in the world now so i have a pretty big but do you have your spinning certification that's the most important thing in the fitness industry not yet <laughs> okay well you're you're mildly credible so go ahead and but i just just so everybody i'm not a licensed traditional doctor but i am board certified in alternative medicine and i combine my md and that's where we are today and i run biohacks which has a bunch of licensed professionals okay so anyways um point is i i will die for what i'm going to say right now with what your body produces, which is the testosterone and peptides, like great peptides like GHK copper, which is found in the saliva, urine, and blood, in uh, the plasma in the blood. Your body already makes it. Your body makes it and needs it. And for example, you start to see an increase in cancer because of the down uh, regulation, the, the production of GHK. Um, and the GHK is not even a fitness peptide. It's for skin and hair and nails and so yeah, forth. Yeah, it's even used topically in a lot of like hair Absolutely. growth and yeah, skin care. Yeah. And, and you, it's basically the 911 for injury. So you get a cut and your genes all of a sudden upregulate GHK for it to come. But as you age, the production declines, and therefore you even see an increase in cancerous activity. Okay. Oh, wait, holy smokes. Wait, did you just say the lack of a peptide um, promotes, uh, can promote cancer? Absolutely. Same thing, uh, uh, you, you'll see now, there's a meta-analysis on growth hormone. Brother, it's wonderful. It's 11,191 participants. They did a... Um, retroactive study so they looked at past studies they didn't do a new study so they looked at pubmed web of china 
and I can't remember, two more large databases, and they collected all these growth hormone studies, and they showed that in adults, this is actually the title, what I'm going to say right now, maybe not verbatim, but in adults with adult growth hormone uh, deficiency, which many of us have, the, the uh, replacement of growth hormone helps in uh, uh, preventing cancer. And, and I'll wrap it if up. You, with, if you have a growth hormone deficiency. Deficiency. Okay. But now there's another study called the TRIM trial, which is uh, stands for thymic regeneration, immune restoration, and insulin mitigation. And even uh, for social proof, not scientific proof, Forbes already done an article on this, Nature. It was originally published in The Aging Cell. And they use DHEA, recombinant growth, growth hormone, and metformin, which is a drug. I personally, I don't, I don't like metformin. Um they use this and they actually show that they can slow down the aging process, which is amazing. So Significantly. And, and by the way, I still want to get back to, to what it was the liver king could have been doing that you feel could have been actually dangerous or harmful. But I remember because I, I like to look and you know this, Dr. D, through a uh, natural lens as much as possible. I, I say, OK, well, they use a synthetic or a pharmaceutical. Not that those are all bad, but would there be a natural way to achieve this? And I remember the trim trial came out and I stepped back and thought, OK, well, let's say somebody doesn't want to use growth hormone. Maybe they don't have a deficiency. Maybe they have downregulated growth hormone receptors because of their diet or there's, there's some issue related to them not necessarily needing to take growth hormone. Well, what about things like natural raw fermented dairy or colostrum or even some of the growth hormone-based peptides like CJC Absolutely. and ipamorelin? And then I looked at the, the DHEA. I don't have much of an issue with like even my wife. She takes very small amounts of DHEA. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic, especially for perimenopausal mm -hmm. and postmenopausal yeah. women. Uh, guys, I, I go back and forth on that. I see some guys seem to do well on it. Some double women seem to do really well on like 10 to 20 migs of DHEA. Yeah. So that one I, I didn't have a huge issue with. And then the, uh, the metformin was the other component. I thought, well, gosh, I mean, between low level physical activity, cold baths, lifting weights and blood glucose disposal agents, right? Mm -hmm. Like berberine or dihydroberberine oh, or so much bitter that. milk or apple cider vinegar, whatever you could probably, I would, I would have liked to see like a sidearm, not that they, they would have done this would have been too complex where instead of growth hormone and metformin and DHA, maybe they try like colostrum and a blood glucose disposal agent and physical activity and maybe some DHA or something like that. But I remember when that study came out, I thought, I mean, there might be a way to do this naturally too. So, but here's the thing, the growth hormone, I don't think they used it in the study per se because of the direct benefits of the growth hormone, but they use it. I, 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 I uh, it's funny with uh, somebody that was here earlier today, I actually went over the study. So it's kind of fresh in my head. Um, but uh, they use it for the, the ability to regenerate the thymus gland. So that's when you can come in. Oh. Yeah, it's, 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 it's I mean, forgive, screw, forgive the colloquialism here, but screw the growth hormone. You don't have to use growth hormone. You can use thymus and alpha, thymus and beta, for example. Peptides. Peptides. Those are great. A lot of people use those during COVID and long haul vaccine and, and saw great results. Right. And, 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 or even like organic meats and so forth, things that you, you can. Like thymus extract. Yes. Or sweetbreads. Yes. Right? So, so, and, and here's, and guys, just to be very clear, I, um, my, my life philosophy, like I, I, I would rather do all this and uh, honest to God, like I'd rather, it's not feasible, but move to the Amazon and live in the middle of nature and get true sun, decrease my chemical burden, which is something we here I'm like super passionate about like before taking a bunch of stuff I'm like how much chemicals how much excitotoxins are you exposed to you know like where do you live do you live next to these crazy towers glyphosate land yeah. all that kind of stuff but so that that that's my real inclination but we live in the middle of a cement jungle which he just rode a scooter through uh <laughs> and and it's like okay these things are impossible you know we're talking to attorneys and busy moms and so forth that it's like okay ma'am your vitamin d is abysmally low you're getting osteomalacia because you're like under 15 vitamin d so it's like okay go out in the sun from this time and this time oh i'm not gonna do it okay fine supplement mm -hmm. so just so so we're clear I, I i if i can one day actually get this all naturally and that's why i admire you brother because you you're you're more isolated you're 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 doing this in a way more natural way and i you know for real not because you're here but hats off so 
But for those that can't, like the the art of regeneration of the, of the thymus gland, which I actually just did the CTA and the calcium score not too long ago. Yeah. And they actually wrote embryological remnants still visible of the thymus gland on my case. I was so happy because I'm like, oh, crap. Is that abnormal to have embryological yeah, of remnants course. of the thymus gland? At this age. Would it normally degrade by your age? Yeah. So, so wow. yeah, in medical school, they trick us. So first year medical school, and there's doctors uh, listening out there, S- see if you remember this. They'll usually, in anatomy, first first uh, s- semester, second semester, they'll give you an X-ray, x-ray of a baby's uh, ch- you know chest, and they'll put an arrow and say, which structure is this? And you're like, Psst. It's the, it's the professor stupid it's like it's the heart man and you put heart and go to the next question then everybody gets that almost everybody gets it wrong because it's the thymus it's the freaking thymus 